A Christmas Masquerade is such a bad film on so many levels, but despite that, I was genuinely curious to see how the deceit would resolve itself. I'm not going to actually give away the ending. I don't actually recommend the film, but just in case you want to watch it for yourself, I won't spoil things. But I will talk a little bit about the narrative and also specifically why I think it's a bad film, because I don't think it's ever fair to say a film is bad and then not give reasons. This is a Christmas film from 2022, directed by Michelle Olé, or Olette, I apologise if I've mispronounced that, written by Julia Cranny, and it stars Erin Agostino as Julianne and David LaFontaine as Michael. And I will say, neither of them are likeable characters. And I'd say the only really likeable character is Laura. But even then, I didn't love her. But she was the only character who never annoyed me, who never irritated me. And that's not to say anything bad about the characters or the actors' performances. I just think, for the most part, these are generally really irritating, badly written characters. And their motivations aren't realistic. The development of the narrative doesn't make sense. The masquerade happens in the beginning of the film and lasts for maybe five minutes. So first of all, technically it's falsely marketed because when you title a film or have a specific image on the poster, it's supposed to be either the main focus or something that the narrative is building up to, not something that's over and done with within the first five minutes and then never mentioned again. So that is worth bearing in mind. If you are looking for a film that is set in a masquerade or you know a ball or a big grand event, it, it, it's it is the important setting for the turning point of the narrative, but it's over and done with quickly and that's it. Long story short, Julianne is Laura's assistant and Laura is a, a PR professional, a very, very good at her job. And Laura agrees to go to an event in her place and it's a masquerade and she meets Michael, a, a client that Laura is desperate to get on her books and the meeting doesn't go down very well but Michael's sister phones up Lara but gets Julianne on the phone and says can you can we meet can we meet again we met in the masquerade let's meet again let's make this work and because she met Julianne they thought the best thing to do would be to pretend that Julianne was Lara still because she had to go under the guise of being Lara to this masquerade she needed ID her name was on the invite that I understand but it was a masquerade. The point of a masquerade is that you're not showing your true identity. People can't quite see you. There's one point where Michael was described as being, I don't know, five foot six or something, um, with a strong jaw, dark hair, and a jacket. And immediately, Julianne knew which person it was. That described pretty much most of the males in that room at that time. So that was ridiculous. And... Obviously, when he met Julianne, thinking she was Lara, she was wearing a mask. And she's not too different from Lara. And she was wearing a ball gown, so people tend to look different when they're in formal attire anyway. So there's absolutely... And, and in my, my opinion, their voices don't sound that different. And you could always just say, well, you'd had a few drinks, things you know sound a little bit different anyway. I don't know. But the point is, it was a masquerade. Of course they could have sent the real Lara the next day at the meeting and would have easily gotten away with it. So that was just ridiculous and the entire narrative made no sense. There was no reason for it. It didn't have to happen. Also, how would Julianne as her assistant have the same level of knowledge and the same abilities that Lara had to help create this PR campaign for Michael? If she could provide the same quality and level of service, why was she her assistant? That doesn't make any sense. And there are just so many other things that felt ridiculous throughout it. And it was just a really terribly written narrative with a lot of ridiculous things. The concert thing was so pointless. And there's a lot of fluff in this that adds nothing. That doesn't move the story forward. And as I said, the characters are really annoying. Michael's quite annoying, but I liked his development. Julian is a character I hated. Nora is really annoying. Um, but in a way, that's a good thing because usually children in Christmas rom-coms are sickly sweet. She's actually a little bit more realistic. So it, she may have been you know, very well acted, no problems there. Um, but in terms of the way the character is written, she's a little bit mischievous. So if you actually prefer children in Christmas rom-coms to be a bit more believable, that's actually something you might like. But personally... I don't mind it when they're sickly sweet. Um, but even Mother Victoria, she was annoying. Um, 
Helena, Michael's Michael's sister, she she was very annoying. She was not a very nice person. So I liked basically none of the characters. Lara was okay. Um, Michael became okay over time. In terms of being festive, there was a carriage ride, a beautiful carriage ride. Um, the costumes were very, very festive. Um, and, and I think that's about it. It wasn't the most Christmassy. There were some Christmas cookies and things, but it's not the film I'd go to to put me in a festive mood. The narrative is just ridiculous and doesn't make any sense. It was a masquerade. Had it been a normal ball or a normal party, a formal occasion where they could very clearly see her face, I would have bought into the needing to send her to the meeting the next day. I would have got that. But it was a masquerade. Her identity was pretty much hidden. The rest of it made no sense. So that was all ridiculous. But as I said, I was curious to see what would happen when, if and when people found out the truth. And I have to say, I, I don't believe Michael's actions at the end because I feel like that's just... I think the betrayal is just too much and I think it wouldn't have worked that way. But never mind. Not a good film. I don't recommend it. The narrator's ridiculous and the characters are annoying and it's not even that festive. It's very, very rare that I'm this negative about a Christmas rom-com because usually I'm very easy to please. All I look for is a couple of likeable characters, a good narrative, or even just a narrative that makes sense, and uh, some festivities. I don't need too much. I don't need complex narratives. I don't need amazing character development. But unfortunately, this film couldn't even meet that. <laughs>